Assalamu alaikum. You are listening to Dear Ustada Raida with your host, Raida Shah Aido. This podcast is about applying radical empathy and prophetic mercy to different life challenges. This podcast is brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the Global Islamic Seminary. At Seekers Guidance, we believe in keeping reliable Islamic knowledge free and accessible for all those who seek it. You can help us keep all our content and services free and also earn the rewards of an ongoing and worthwhile charity by making a small pledge at seekersguidance.org slash donate. Even $10 a month will go a long way in helping us produce content and services and in keeping them accessible to everyone. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum dear listeners, welcome back to Dear Ustada Raida. I'm your host Raida Shah Aidil and today's episode number 10 is titled Marriage and Severed Ties of Kinship. Question Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My parents got divorced when I was three and I ended up with my father who raised me. I didn't see my mother for almost 19 years until I finally decided I wanted to see her. Alhamdulillah, I saw her and we got very close but it created a lot of problems for me as well as my mother and father were at times competing for my loyalty. It felt like I was being dragged from both sides. My mother has a lot of emotional problems and gets angry very easily. And because I haven't grown up with her, she sometimes expects me to act in certain ways or do certain things that I'm not accustomed to. And she gets angry at me for not doing them. This has caused me a lot of psychological problems and at times I would dread talking to my mom because I would be scared of witnessing a bad reaction from her despite trying my best not to say or do anything that might upset her. My mother right now doesn't talk to me. She severed ties with me about a year ago and is forbidding my sisters from talking to me as well. This happened because I was getting to know a girl for marriage and my mom insisted that I bring this girl to the country where my mother is living before we do anything. And I explained to my mother in the gentlest manner that I couldn't do that because neither the girl nor her family would agree to that if we weren't married. I informed my mother that I was planning on doing a recitation of the Fatiha with my father's side of the family and the girl's family and my mother was furious that she wouldn't be present for this particularly after I explained that neither me nor my mother would have the means sorry, neither me nor my father would have the means to fly my mother out to the country where we were going to do this After this, my mother stopped talking to me and my sisters too Not because my sisters want to, but because my mother is not letting them. I've been texting my mother since, and I tried calling her as well, but she stopped answering me. I message her frequently to ask about her, make to offer her, and apologize for upsetting her, but she doesn't answer me. My mother lives in a different country, and I don't have the means to go there at the moment. Things didn't work out between the girl and I for marriage, so now and now I'm looking for another suitable marriage partner. So my question is, would it be permissible for me to get married? While my mother is not talking to me given my circumstances, I'm nearing 30 years old and it's very difficult for me to please everyone in my family. Obviously, because I grew up with my father, I'm closer to him than my mother and he's more involved in my life than she was. I'm thinking, I'm just thinking that I am reaching a point in my life where I don't want to keep delaying marriage, especially for reasons that are beyond my control and capacity to deal with. Answer. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I pray this finds you well. May Allah reward you for reaching out to us. Mother's anger. It sounds like beneath your mother's anger are deep feelings of shame, guilt, sadness, and so on. When you told her that you would read the Fatiha without her, she probably felt completely cast aside, disrespected, and unloved. Her decision to cut off ties with you remains sinful, but it is understandable given her emotional, imbalanced nature. Even though she did not raise you from the age of three, she is still your mother, and it is still obligatory for you to treat her with kindness and respect. 
Because of this, I strongly discourage you from getting married without her knowledge and her blessing. She will be even angrier, and you will be giving your future wife the wrath of a deeply unhappy mother-in-law. Give yourself a reasonable time limit. I am not saying to wait 10 years, but you do need to try harder and give your mother time to come around. Please perform the prayer of guidance about getting married. Please perform the prayer of need and beg Allah to soften your mother's heart. Exhaust every option. Please try harder to reconnect with your mother. Send her gifts, write her letters and so on. Give in charity daily, even if it is little, with the intention of earning your mother's forgiveness. Ideally, please save up to fly in person to kiss her hand. When she sees you, it is only natural for her heart to soften and for her to weep healing tears. It sounds like she has 19 years of regret and shame manifesting in her anger towards you. Please complete this course so you can better understand the rank of your mother, even though she is challenging. Excellent parents, Muhammad Mawlud Bir Al Walidain explained your parents' rights and how to fulfill them. Financial priorities in marriage. If you cannot afford to visit your mother, can you afford to support a wife? Even though you are not close to your mother, she remains your mother and must be treated with compassion and respect. She has already missed out on so much of your life and it sounds like she is desperate to connect with you. She is trying to be part of your marital selection process because she wants to be part of your life. Gender interaction. Please know that you still need to observe appropriate gender interaction while looking for a wife. Do not, do not get emotionally attached. The woman you marry must be sensitive to your mother's situation too. Being kind and patient with your mother <clears throat> is a pathway to Jannah for you and your future wife when handled well. Mother's rank. Allah Most High says in the Quran, We commanded men to be good in respect of his parents. His mother carried him in her womb despite weakness upon weakness and his weaning is in two years. We said to man, be grateful to me and to your parents. To me is the ultimate return. I pray that when you become a father someday, you will better understand the rank of your own mother. Even if your father raised you when your mother left at the age of three, consider this. Your mother kept you safe in her womb, gave birth to you, nursed you and looked after you for the first three years of your life. Nothing you can do can repay that debt to her. Please see how can I deal with my difficult mother in a respectful way. SubhanAllah, this is such a sad question. <coughs> And um, and the thing with with anger, and we've all experienced it, you know, like say somebody says something to you or does something, and and you feel this flood of like shame or humiliation or some kind of deep regret, and like unless you have spent conscious effort like to meditate to be mindful to realize oh. You know, that just pressed on my inadequacy trigger. Oh, that just pressed on my feelings of unworthiness. You know, so many of us get so flooded by that that we end up blashing out. It's a very defensive, very reptilian brain kind of response, very reactionary. And and it's often like the whole if you look up the link about the anger iceberg, like right up the top is anger, but beneath the waterline uh, really painful feelings like shame, inadequacy, regret. So I would imagine that this mother who had not seen her son for 19 years, like that is a long time, subhanAllah, to not see your own flesh and blood, you know, and then realizes that what, you know, my son wants to read the Fatiha without me. Like it's pretty clear that that pressed on her button of of being completely unimportant, disregarded, unloved, you know, and then boom, the reaction to that is like cutting off ties, you know, 
and a year of having a mother that is angry with you is not a good idea subhanallah that is not a state that anyone wants to be in particularly if the mother passes away or the person passes away like this is not this is not good and this is something that has to be rectified like priority one like priority a you know and the thing is from reading between the lines yeah it sounds like she's a difficult mom and you know she wasn't around for like two decades and like my dad's closer to me anyway she's emotionally imbalanced like yeah you know that that's that's challenging totally i hear that but she is still your mother and that is reason enough to literally bend over backwards to fix this this is a situation that requires so much care and so much concern and so much wisdom and this is something that needs to be done in person because clearly you know this young man is trying to send her messages trying to call her she's just ignoring so what he needs to do instead of worrying about getting married save up money fly to his mom knock on her door sit there until she opens it ask for forgiveness kiss her hand give her a hug you know this is a priority I cannot say this enough no matter how unreasonable his mother may be you know she's hurt she's in a lot of pain and he needs to do everything he has in his power to rectify that you know and inshallah setting that intention will bring the provision inshallah it will bring the plane ticket it will bring the ease it will bring but it all begins with deciding that my mom is important enough to 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 do exit all the effort I need to to get this right. Even if she's being difficult, and let's face it, you know this is a dunya. Everything will always be imperfect, you know. But like Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, you know, commands you know, respect and compassion towards parents, like even abusive parents, and that's that's a really bitter pill to swallow. Which is why I recommend everyone do that amazing course on excellence to parents run by Sheikh Rami in the store, mashallah. You know, everybody do it. It's really life changing and transformative. It's very humbling. Um, because it just shows you like the rank of parents, especially one's mother. You know, so and it's really sad as well this the scenario where mother is severed ties with the son and then she told her daughters not to talk to their brother. So this is like precisely the kind of flaw and negativity that's so hurtful. You know, and I'm probably the sisters are like, oh, I don't want to disobey my mom, even though there's no disobedience in, even though there's no obedience and disobedience to Allah, because cutting off ties is sinful, it's impermissible, you know, so it's like, so now not only has this young man been isolated from his mom, he's also isolated from his sisters, you know, and, and maybe he might think that marriage will help him feel better, you know, which is, it's very normal to want companionship and whatnot that's it's very natural but the thing is you can imagine what might happen that's will he to get married to someone without his mother's blessing and consent and it may seem easier in the short term like okay my mom is an unbalanced emotional irrational angry woman i am not going to even try anymore because i tried calling tried missing she's not replying you know and i i want to get married i want to start my own life and it sounds reasonable <laughs> except even if you were to do that and then his mom his mom would get even angrier <laughs> you know and that's all oh, yeah latif it's like this cycle of negativity you know so a bit of short-term discomfort for long-term gain so short-term discomfort meaning you know taking money out of the wedding budget to buy a plane ticket to ask forgiveness from mom you know fixing that you know fixing fixing that leak in the baraka bucket because that it that is a massive hole and if that hole is not fixed you know it it flows onto everything else you know and it's like parents don't have to be reasonable for you to still treat them with compassion and respect <laughs> you know when is it's 
that's the that's the battle like that's like the battlefield of the nafs you know and inshallah like by him striving to still do right by his mom inshallah that you know seeking his mom's forgiveness you know having himself back in her good favor Allahu alam maybe that will be the means through which Allah will send him a wonderful wife you know inshallah then this wife will you know will have the blessings of both his mom and his dad she'll be welcomed you know she'll feel like wow this family really loves me and cherishes me and wow i have a mom-in-law i can you know get to know even it's like remotely you know like that's like a lot better right like a joining of families a joining of hearts rather than you know getting married and then realizing oh my husband um's mom already doesn't like me and because she had nothing to do with the wedding and that these kinds of resentments are stored in hearts you know and then grandkids come along and you know and then grandkids are alhamdulillah a wonderful way to soften hearts and bring together estranged family members of course you know but you know it's just like get it right from the beginning fix things with your mom you know do your best it may seem inconvenient but this is like a short-term sacrifice for long-term gain because marriage is for the long haul and children you know it's easier when they're born into a climate where their parents are happy because the parents parents grandparents are happy with them it's like this flow on baraka effect and a flow on like painful effect when there's toxicity like this right well no may Allah make things easier for all families and help our hearts heal this brings us to the end of today's episode thank you for listening I pray this has been helpful wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin nabi numi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh thank you for listening we hope that you found immense benefit in today's episode Please take a moment to spread this benefit by sharing this podcast with your friends and family. Thank you.